I am back with another book review and I have a book about migration. So it's called On the Wing, American Birds and Migration by Carol Lerner. And I'll get into that in just a second. But first, before I begin, I just wanted to wish anyone who is watching this peace of mind and happiness. And I hope that uh, life is being a blessing to you. And I hope that you can maintain a positive and happy mindset in this current day and age. So yes, I will lead with that. So yes, On the Wing, uh, American Birds of Migration by Carol Lerner. Good book to read, again, as always, to yourself or the children in your life. I actually got this book from my local library, so hopefully you can find it in yours as well if you don't wish to purchase it. This is um, the part that I found of interest. It talks about the primary migratory pathways that birds take in North America, and they are the Atlantic Flyway, Mississippi Flyway, Central Flyway, and the Pacific Flyway. Good things to know. Yes, chimney swifts. Um, interesting fact on them, they used to make their nests in dead trees, but uh, due to a variety of reasons, they now primarily nest in chimneys, thus their name, chimney swifts. So, kids might find that fact uh, engaging. How do birds fly? Well, there have been studies to suggest that they do use the magnetic fields of the Earth, and there have been other studies to suggest they, they use and rely upon celestial navigation. This little uh, experiment that was conducted uh, kind of proves that birds do rely upon celestial navigation to aid in their migratory process to help them, you know, learn their pathways. Um, in this scenario, um, in, a, in a laboratory setting, uh, Polaris was removed from the celestial uh, sphere that the birds look at, and the bird in question here, when he was released from this darkened dome into this faux setting, with Polaris removed, he couldn't find his path. So, <laughs> kind of proves that yes, birds, at least some of them, perhaps most of them, do rely upon celestial navigation, particularly probably the ones that fly at night. <laughs> Touches on also uh, just some amazing facts that birds um, partake in in their migratory process. For instance, hummingbirds, they can fly 500 miles, or they can and they do fly 500 miles over the Gulf of Mexico nonstop. And just think about their little wings, how quickly their wings fly. Um, yeah, how many beats is that per, per flight over the Gulf? Just mind blowing, right? Such mental fortitude to be able to do that. <laughs> And then also talks about, you know, if you're reading this to a child, just good information to help them learn about is um, vanishing forests. Unfortunately, uh, forests in North America and elsewhere are vanishing and that is affecting uh, birds and um, their ability to repopulate themselves. So yes, forests are vanishing and as a result, the number of birds are vanishing as well. So. And then, you know, at least I, you know, myself growing up when I thought about migration, I always thought about north-south migration, but a lot of birds, they also migrate um, east to west, and this is a duck, this is a specific type of duck, and they migrate east to west in Canada. Flight patterns, this part's cool. Um, birds of prey, soaring birds, you know, hawks, eagles, vultures, they fly in these spiral-like soaring patterns. Uh, and they rely upon warm air currents. And as a result of that, they always tend to start their migratory journeys in the morning as the warm air currents are rising. Cool thing for young kids to learn about. Also talks about different um, flight patterns of different birds. The thrush, it has this kind of roller coaster-like pattern. Interesting stuff for kids to learn about adults too. <laughs> and I'm wrapping it up here. Yes, it talks about um, changing dyes with the seasons and how um, some birds, uh, such as song sparrows, in the warmer months they enjoy eating insects, but then as the insects, you know, go underground, um, die off, they change their diet to accommodate the changing seasons and they then go to eating seed-based products. And that can include bread. You know, if you're outside at a restaurant, you might notice those cute little song sparrows coming up and nibbling your crumbs um, if you're doing some outdoor dining. And I think that's actually the last page that I had um, dog-eared, but I will touch on this as well. How do scientists study migration? Um, well, they do so by tagging birds, which most adults are aware of. You know, they tag them with a little metal band around their leg with a, with a no tracking number, etc. And then also, some birds in this day and age, they also are tracked with 
uh, radio transmitters. <laughs> don't know how I feel about that. I don't think the birds particularly enjoy it, but maybe it's a necessary evil of science. You know, I'm not one to say. On the Wing, American Birds in Migration. Such a good book to read right now at the height of fall um, when birds, a lot of birds are making their migratory journey. Share this with your children or just read it yourself. Anyway, I do thank you for joining me. Um, and again, I wish you well. And I hope that if you did take uh, anything away from this video and you liked it, please, uh, again, subscribe, like it, share it, you know, whatever. I enjoy making these and I, and I, and I hope this all <laughs> enjoys watching them. Anyway, thank you and blessings be upon you. Uh, until next time.